So we, we, we just got request upon request upon request for, from, you know, established businesses to, you know, for assistance on the blockchain side of things. Now, whether that's a token generation event, whether that's NFT support, whether it's a little bit of both, so on and so forth. So we've actually been engaging quite a lot of uh, pre-sales to the point where we've actually set up a, a, a private uh, for-profit arm for software services so we can sign statements of work and we've already got some and um, and that's that's bringing in you know that's bringing in revenue which is really good because we've got you know we've got all this software we've got all this intellectual property we've got all this knowledge we've got resources we've got you know all this value and experience that we can help with and uh, it's you know we've got turnkey solutions so that's been that's been great so that's something that was set up in the last few months <laughs>
uh, a key cornerstone to all of that was to deliver the, uh, the new content management based website uh, with an overhauled user experience, wikis, blogs, better searchability, better rankings, increased videos, Reddit, refreshed Facebook, increased Twitter traffic, everything, you know, to the point where I remember this time in the, in the video last time, we, if you did a, if you did a search for smart NFTs or you did a search for Phantasma, uh, we, we were just nowhere. You couldn't, I mean, I couldn't even find us. It was, it was really interesting. So that, and, and Scott, you've been pivotal in delivering that website along with everyone else. So that's been quite good. It's providing us the ability to make really rapid and nimble changes so that we can sort of act as a, a one-stop shop front end, you know, for anyone new to the ecosystem to be able to view not just what's going on at a chain level, but also to view what's happening at an entire ecosystem level, all the different partners and everyone that's building on the system and delivering. Because there is a lot of software out there that's gone live in the last six months as well. And this is a good way for everyone to go in, find it and start using it, which is, uh, which we feel has was incredibly important. That's something that we didn't have the capability to do, funnily enough, you know, this time when we did the last video. So that's been that's been very useful. We've also done three software releases, uh, code names Bentley, Cadillac, and Datsun. So I, I just came up with the idea that we just started naming them after uh, after car manufacturers. It's a bit of fun, gives them a bit of character. Otherwise it was like version 4.6.7.4.2 right. something. It was, it was annoying. When they do get to watch the, uh, the video with Garth, they talk about a car manufacturer there. Are these, are these, are these <laughs> names here have anything to do with, uh, with the car manufacturer he may be working with? <laughs> no, it's just to throw people off the trail more than anything. Yeah. No, no, it was just, it, yeah. it was more, um, it, it was more just to give everything a fun name because it's easy to say, hey, we're doing, because like, you know, this uh, on uh, Tuesday next week or Wednesday next week, we'll be doing our Eagle release. That was the only car I could find that started with an E for some reason. I don't even know what an Eagle vehicle is. But anyway, look, the, the purpose of these, these software releases really has been <clears throat> to facilitate everyone that's been, you know, building and running things on the chain. So... For example, we we introduced better support for we introduced the smart compiler. But we also introduced better support for the smart compiler to the point now where Ghost Market are using it, Pavilion are using it, and everyone else that's pretty much building on the chain are using it. So it gives every developer the ability to produce their own contracts and deploy them without having to be an absolute coding genius. And that's been incredibly helpful and it's it's flowed on to what you currently see now with Ghost Market and Pavilion, and you'll see more of that later. We we also focused on better, well, a, a better quality of life really for everyone involved on the ecosystem, which is really geared towards uh, sharding additional nodes to ensure you know that we have a, a good level of service, especially, you know, we, we had a lot of traffic of like, and we just wanted to make sure that we're absolutely bulletproof. And we're going to go further in that regard. So everything that we've done really is to just improve the quality of life for anyone using or building on the chain. And we're going to continue on with that. Uh, Poltergeist 2.5 has gone live. Uh, we've had multiple renditions of that. It's now supported by iOS, which, uh, which is for your Apple device, which was something that was sort of just sitting there for quite a long time, but we finally got around to publishing. So that's live now. It now has uh, also has, it, it is a native uh, Binance Smart Chain wallet as well, which is handy. And when we get into the questions a bit later, um, I'll tell you why that was added. Uh, we also have uh, Ecto 1.2. Ecto is actually now a very mature web plugin. Uh, funnily enough, it's become, it's become somewhat the preferred wallet on the ecosystem, people quite like it. It's nice and simple. It just plugs into your browser. Uh, the last re revision of that, they added NFT video support, which was quite handy. We're gonna be used quite a lot well, for more media as well. Uh, one, one click NFT linking with Ghost Market, which is incredibly helpful and useful. Uh, improved swaps, fee logic, the works. It, it, it is a very mature, robust, web plugin wallet uh, to the point where anyone new coming to the project is, seems to gravitate towards it for, uh, for one reason or another. I mean, it's, it's, 
it's quite interesting too when you just watch user behavior sometimes you sort of tell people to use something and then they will go and use everything and then they'll come back and tell you which you know what they prefer to use so it seems that uh, that's been quite popular so uh, we'll be giving more attention to that and giving it more flexibility uh, the other thing that that went live recently which was quite uh, quite useful for live events especially when we did the the semcore kevin smith sale uh, was the ability to provide live chat support via our website and scott you were quite instrumental in delivering that and a lot of people in the community were involved in that so I think they've all just been really great things to add and they've really improved <clears throat> the quality of life and just our ability to, to support not only developers and people using the chain, but also, you know, also the end user, uh, not only from providing better products, but also, also to provide a better experience for if they get stuck. And I think those are going to become even more important given how, uh, given how crazy the entire market's gotten. Um, I think that, you know, during a, during next, you know, a, a period where things are a little bit uncertain and people start stop, you know, screaming when moon and when Lambo and all that sort of stuff, uh, the smart punters sort of hang around and start using things and doing research and actually getting involved and, and actually using the software uh, rather than just buying a a coin with a picture of a dog on it. So, yeah, I'd like to think that those will uh, those will be increasingly important going forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also did a number of um, NFT launches. Actually, on the, on, Scott, you've been you've been very pivotal in those, especially in the coordination of those. Do you um, would you like to cover uh, what we did on the NFT side in the last sort of six months? Because it's uh, been quite a lot. You know, there's there's just so many different things that are going off, and uh, you know, before I get into that, mention um, that we actually have a merch store. You may have noticed that I've got this and. When we had Gail put this together, and I don't even know if you heard the story, Bill, but I asked Gail, I said, do you, have you ever heard of the Got Milk ad before? She said, what? I said, well, that's what I wanted to say. I want the Got Milk <laughs> font and to have Got Soul. She said, well, what's that? I said, well, go and research it. It's a big ad that, you know, big campaign, and everybody in North America gets it. Um, but but with you, that, there's some you, really you know, cool you know, stuff. You, and, you, know, I lived, you know, I lived there for two years, right? I, yeah, I, I know you know. <laughs> I know you know it. But check this out socks dude we got phantasma socks um but uh, you know that's just the fun stuff and one of the cool things is is you know with kevin smith uh we had the opportunity to get into hollywood and that was our in and uh we did fairly well with that launch it was one of the top 25 nft campaigns uh of of all time it uh, it really hit some some magnificent uh exposure and we ended up getting exposure internationally and some some very big mainstream national publications here in the united states and it was very exciting and with that that had opened the door that we are now speaking to different parties as well within the hollywood community uh to bring nfts now there's a few things that we've learned with that and uh for example that's the value of nfts and with phantasma having a our, our smart contract and and smart nft platform we've got the ability to um to, to create this engagement and, and, and the value within these NFTs that uh, a variety of other platforms can't offer. And so, for example, um, we've got a band by the name of Light45 that's launching very shortly. And with what they're doing with NFTs is, is really, really cool. We think we're going to be the first blockchain in the world to actually launch a full private a concert on the blockchain and within that NFT there's going to be uh, other embedded aspects for example like a, a live documentary and the way I like to relate it to is you know I, I wish I had a CD with me but remember back when you'd open up your CD and you'd pull the insert out and you'd you'd connect with the band and you'd read it and your friends could hear the music and you can play it for them and that you could listen to it on the radio but unless you went and bought that CD you're the only one with with that and so that's really cool or being able to have a piece of art on the wall that signed by the band and you know has a link to the phantasma blockchain nft uh, so so that's that's really cool uh we've got a uh that's why um that's why vinyls grew in popularity again uh, people's remember when uh, vinyls were dead and then they just they came back in a really big way well 
because everyone loved the, you know, loved the inserts, loved the information that was on. It was really cool. The artwork, you know, people used to love getting that, mm-hmm. you know, that album and having it in a collection to the point where most people threw it, they threw out their CDs of adopted vinyl. It's, um, it's just got a nice tactile feel to it, I guess. It's a new way. It's a new way to connect. Uh, it's a, mm. It, with with traditional means and you know we still have the elements of emotion and connectivity but for, for example uh we're we're talking with this with with this team that does clay animation stop motion animation and they are very well known they've done uh stop motion for uh, some of the biggest disney movies that that you will all be familiar with and for example uh, one of the nfts is going to be the creation of that stop motion the actual stop motion piece of itself and the clay piece, um, so that's something that uh, that people can showcase in, in their home, and it's tied directly to to the blockchain. So that's that's really cool. Uh, we've got a couple of different esports clubs that we're working with. Uh, one of them that you're very familiar with, uh, the Phantasma community, is is Mazer. So within the next uh, within a month or so, we should be seeing some really interesting NFTs for the esports community, and they've got content creators that they they work with and uh, for them to engage with their audience and all of these different things are, are elements that we've learned by by looking at these campaigns that have launched and of course the campaigns on on uh, on on phantasma so um, from from an NFT launch standpoint, there's some really cool projects that we're speaking with. From an enterprise standpoint, uh, I don't know if we want to get into that at this point in time, Bill. I'll let you. No, no, I'll talk about that. Um, and those, you know, that that focuses on our our on our, uh, on our our target audiences. So, uh, with that, why why don't why don't you share some of the enterprise aspects that we're working with right now? Uh, sure. Look, I, I think I'll get to that a little bit later. So just one thing that we did launch in. Now, uh, none of these NFT drops would have been possible without the assistance from from the guys at Ghost Market, who, you know, are, are very much part of the, the ecosystem. They've just done a, a successful fundraise to increase their capabilities. And one thing we have learned in, in this is we've now instituted a, a more streamlined approach to when, because we get approached by a lot of different people, we will engage them. And obviously, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it will have to be delivered in combination or um, almost entirely by ghost market. So we've actually nutted out a very, a very robust, repeatable and less intensive way of onboarding now, which I think will serve everyone well going forward. And therefore, we've just been learnings that have come up out of the, the launches that we've done uh, to date. Now, I'm more on what's been done to date. Obviously, if, you, if you'd seen Pavilion, and look, I won't talk too much about that because Garth came along for this, but Garth's, Garth's speech took, went, Garth had a lot to talk about. So Garth's uh, update is going to come as a separate video, which uh, it deserves its own video, actually. So oh, yeah. there's a lot of exciting updates there. Yeah. But um, like, just to wrap it up, I mean, Pavilion launch, Pavilion is turnkey. Right? You can take any game, that's most games that have an in-game economy, stick, plug them into Pavilion and start using NFTs and blockchain. That's, that's it. They just give they give them a build of the game, tell them what they want to do, and that's it. It's that simple. And that's a combination of using Pavilion. It's a combination of using the uh, you know C++ SDK that they, they built uh, with a bit of help from us, but it was mostly them. And as a result, they've launched uh, you know they've launched uh, aside from twenty two racing series, and you'll get an update all about that when you watch the Garth video. They've also launched two other games, which was Winter Fury. And the Gardens Between, which are successful games, they're they're already launched on major platforms: Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, PC. So this has been really exciting. And each of those comes with their own community, and they're able to plug in, which is just fantastic. Uh, Ghost Market has just grown and grown and grown uh, to the point where it's become its own beast, and it's it's just going from strength to strength. You know, they launched Binance the other day, uh, Binance Smart Chain support. They, you know, launch self-minting. Yet the UI has just gone in, up in leaps and bounds, and that's just going to continue to grow. So, um, you know, we're really proud to have them as, you know, as partners of the community. We all work very closely together, and um, I was really happy to hear that they were able to, you know, secure a lot of funding to solidify their future. Because if anyone deserves it, it's them. They, they've worked their absolute. They, they haven't stopped. I mean. We'll, <laughs> 
was starting to worry about Vincent's family at one point, whether they were getting food or not, because uh, <laughs> he, yeah, he, was, uh, he was always online and always working. So you really can't fault their commitment. Those guys are amazing. Yeah. Uh, we also had, amazing. well, this is, this is something that will flow into enterprise, but we actually got approached given that this is something that sort of came up from left field is the fact that we were launching and had tokens instantly available on, on our blockchain on Phantasma, uh, Neo, uh, Neo at the same time, if you wanted it, uh, but most importantly, Ethereum. So you could then plug into liquidity pools and that. And we actually got approached by uh, Mimunity where they actually came to us and said, hey, can we run our token generation event on your chain? Because then we get, we get access to a, a fast blockchain that's cheap, but we also get access to Ethereum. We give people the ability to swap back and forth. We can start our own liquidity pools. And can you do that for us? And we went, yeah. To the point where that's actually become a service offering that we, which I'll get into next. It's funny how these these things that you're already doing, people will approach you and say, "Hey, can we do that too?" And do you realize that? Oh, holy crap! We've got a product here that we can on sell. So that's um, that's that's been a nice surprise, and it's been it's been very useful, and it's a very powerful offering. You know, it's a turnkey token generation event service. So it is, and a, another really... good example of that is uh, what was created with Semcor, and and how their their marketplace can be packaged as as a product for a variety of other solutions that are out there. And uh, that's just an yeah. example of what could 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 potentially come down the road. Yeah, so I'll get onto Semcor a bit later because it's in one of the Reddit questions, um, and I'll be I'm meeting with David again tomorrow. There's not a Really, a day goes by where I'm not chatting to him. So, um, well, actually, I might as well just uh, address that Reddit question now. Someone asked, uh, was Semcore just a, uh, a sell and run? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, funnily enough, if you go, anyone with, uh, anyone with, anyone with a better ounce will be able to uh, find their wallets and you'll be able to see that they still have every single token that they collected, both Kevin and David, and all the soul that they collected is still staked. So, and no, they're not running anywhere. We talk all the time and we will be doing things going forward. Um, so I look forward to updating you in the next video, which won't be too far from now. Uh, future, other future things that are coming up, obviously, if you saw nominees went, uh, nominees went public the other day, that's a sports engagement platform that we're leveraging the power of our NFTs. I highly recommend you go and check out what they've got. Uh, we've been in close contact with Shakib and the guys there for quite a long time. And it was really good to see that go, you know, get finally get publicly announced because we've known about it for some time now. But uh, we've also got Jesse's Clink, which is the um, NFT music streaming service to look forward to. So I can't wait to check that out. Uh, there'll be Ghost Festival this this summer or winter if you're um, <laughs> depending on which continent you're in, uh, and, and Blood Rune as well. So at, um, at an enterprise level, so what what we found in in doing when I referred to okay, we already had a product that we were that people came to us for is, you know, especially with the market and, and renewed interest in crypto because it all, you know, went right up. You know, there was a lot of people getting into the market that previously probably wouldn't have had entered it and looking at ways that they could build up service offerings and so forth. So we, we, we just got request upon request upon request for, from, you know, established businesses to, you know, for assistance on the blockchain side of things. Now, whether that's a token generation event, whether that's NFT support, whether it's a little bit of both, so on and so forth. So we've actually been engaging quite a lot of uh, pre-sales to the point where we've actually set up a, a, a private uh, for-profit arm for software services so we can sign statements of work. And we've already got some. And, um, and that's, that's bringing in... You know, that's bringing in revenue, which is really good because we've got, you know, we've got all this software, we've got all this intellectual property, we've got all this knowledge, we've got resources, we've got, you know, all this value and experience that we can help with. And uh, it's, you know, we've got turnkey solutions. So that's been, that's been great. So that's something that was set up in the last few months. Uh, now, from a no, so I guess some examples of you know people that we're working with. Uh, unfortunately, that they're, they're not quite public yet. But you'll be hearing some more about that. But um, you know, we have been working with uh, a major restaurant ag aggregator, and you know, some of the stuff that that they're coming up with, um, especially in the ways that they want to use NFTs and so forth. 
uh, especially with, when you look at some of the problems like people not scanning QR codes in this, you know, in this um, COVID world and, you know, the inability to have face-to-face -face engagement and having to get engagement in other ways. It's just been really exciting. You know, it's a very smart people working there. The ideas have just been absolutely fantastic. Very excited to be doing ongoing work with them. Uh, there was, there's a, uh, a fast food, well, a retail advertiser and a consumer engagement platform. Scott, you've had a bit more to do with that. And they're, they're providing, um, well, maybe you can do the update on that one, but um, well, let's not to, to talk too much about it because we yeah, haven't. It's just, it's just, it's really awesome. <laughs> it's really, really it's just awesome. Great. I mean, I come from the internet marketing background when I started to hear about this and, you know, how, how retailers are, are going to, going to be able to uh, interact uh, and, and save the cost per click and have engagement. And it's just it, in a virtual reality world uh, integrated into this, into the real world. Uh, it was just amazing. Yeah. So look, that's been, that's been great. Look forward to and really interesting to work with them. Yeah. So just in regards to people not being able to get that, that engagement again, that's another means that they're doing it digitally. Uh, also achievements. And I've been talking about, you know, obviously awareness was something that we wanted to fix up. We wanted to get the chain robust, but we also wanted to solidify our future. Uh, now liquidity is, everyone keeps asking me about liquidity. What are we doing about liquidity? Because uh, it seems to be an ongoing, ongoing thing. So there's a few updates. I mean, things that you have seen go live was uh, the Intercoin Fiat on ramp, mm. uh, which will have US support very soon. Uh, we will be launching. Well, it should have been live already, but um, we're we just a couple of things delayed it. But we, we will be launching a USD uh, trading pair because that's something that keeps getting asked for, especially in a, a turbulent market. So that's that's happening. Should have already happened, but um, anyway, exchanges work at their own at their own pace. Uh, and look, we are doing other things to increase liquidity. I mean, you can't really go through all of them publicly, but we, we've heard you, we get it. I mean, a, a liquid market is something we need more than, you know, just as much as you. And, you know, we're doing everything that we can. And we've actually, you know, invested quite a lot of money in some of this stuff. You know, they're, you know, launching a USD trading pair, it's not cheap. Uh, you know, launching a fiat on ramp, it's not cheap. Uh, doing other things to increase liquidity. It, all costs money and we've heard you we've spent the money we're doing it let's move on uh, i want to step in here because every time we have these conversations at the management level these guys have got to hear my ear of it as well and uh uh, I, I just, you know, I get all the way back to why I, I initially invested into this project and you said it, Bill, to, to us six months ago that, that Phantasma is a software solution provider and we are a, a business and we are demonstrating usage. We have fantastic utility and we are going through adoption. So as long as we remain consistent with that and work with our, our enterprise clients, work with our, our DAP partners, and now we're talking about and focusing in our, on our token holders. Um, and, and those are our three core audiences. So yeah, I'll just let you get back. I just want to have that reminder that uh, liquidity definitely is, is a challenge, but gosh, we are a growing, thriving solution provider uh, as well. So soldiers, don't forget that. Sorry, Bill, please continue. <laughs> No, it's okay. Um, look, I think, yeah, I think everyone, anyone that's done a little bit of research would know that our software has always been very good. But, you know, for a retail investor, liquidity is important because if if someone does get in and for some reason they need to get out for some particular reason, I mean, not everyone can, just, you know, sit on tokens forever. People have challenges in life. People need, to, uh, you know, sometimes they need to be able to get out um, without, you know, completely crashing a market. So, um, yeah, look, anyway. You've been heard. We've spent the money. We're doing it. Um, it's it's moving on. So yep. So let's just wrap it up. Really, I mean, we're we're really focusing on liquidity. We're working to solidify our partners and and provide the quality of life they need. Uh, we've got plenty of cool things coming up in that regards. Uh, watch Gas video. Look forward to seeing more from Vincent because Vincent will be doing a video to update everything on Ghost Market. And we just need to make sure that we are liquid enough, that we are secure enough, that we are providing solutions, and then we can provide the service level that we need to provide to the people that are running on the chain. So that's that's where really nice where job, we're at. Dude. That's a okay. lot. You just cover. I can't. You know, it's incredible what you just covered in a, 
in the, in the amount of time that we've been sitting here for 35 or so minutes. Um, there are a few uh, I've questions. Got a, I've got a, I've have. got a toddler. I've got a toddler that's about to get <laughs> yeah, up. So, you, so. you know how to get things done. No, keep, keep sometimes, going. sometimes in our meetings, <laughs> that's how it is. It goes, oh boy, okay, boy, Bill's coming in, and he, we got to get shit done here. Uh, but there were a few questions here, dude, that were on uh, Reddit, and I, I mean, it seems half the questions you had already, you know, addressed in in so your we'll just uh, through quickly. speech, and whatnot. But um, there, there's a couple here. Um, you know, for example. When are we looking for looking at launching cross chain NFT swaps? Uh, so our, our token, our our NFT token standard is uh, it is compatible with ETH. There are things that uh, can't be done on ETH that we can. Uh, so there are there are elements of metadata that that they do not support. But from a pure lift and shift of metadata uh, across its Look, we've done, we've, you know, for the most part, we've we've done a lot of the uh, a lot of the building on that. So, uh, when will it launch? When, when it's, well, when the guys are sufficiently happy with it and all testing is completed. Now that will have a flow on to, um, I, you know, I mentioned Binance Smart Chain. Um, obviously, launching any type of chain swap is not something that's quick, and it's not something we're going to rush into, uh, because, like I said, you lose one token, it's all for nothing. So. Um, I'd, I'd appreciate it if everyone let us do our due diligence there. At a technical level, it's not that partic- it's not particularly difficult because because Binance Smart Chain, for all intents and purposes, is almost identical to Ethereum, just running slightly differently. At, at a technical level, if you look at the token standards and so forth, it's all very similar. Uh, so at a technical level, it's fine, but we want to make sure that we've done our, our due diligence. Uh, I noticed a question here about what the state of Cosmic Swaps. Well, Cosmic Swaps have been working since day one. Every time that you do a swap in, uh, so we had a chicken and the egg situation, which you can all the egg, it's one or the other. <laughs> uh, we had one of those situations when we went live. And if I don't know if anyone remembers ontology, but you couldn't get ontology gas. You couldn't stake your ontology to get ontology gas unless you had ontology gas, but you couldn't get ontology gas. And, you know, it was like a, it was like this, uh, uh, it was a conundrum. Um, so every time you do that first, so say you bought, if say you bought Sol, like day one, when we went live, the day you bought Sol and you swapped it across and you got a little bit of KCAL that allowed you to start staking, that's a cosmic swap right there. So that's been working since day one. A constant challenge, and this is, and again, why liquidity is important. A constant challenge with cosmic swaps is to have the sufficient liquidity backing behind it to back it all up. Because when you're doing a swap from one token that has a value to another token that has a value, obviously there's going to be a ratio that gets affected. Uh, so we need increased liquidity behind it, powering all that. So again, that's why we're focusing on liquidity. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I believe that that answers that. Technology is there, always has been. Um, having liquidity to back it, that's what we're working on. Well, getting back to our first question, our third one kind of leads, lends right into that. Is there, are, are we ever going to see Sol on the Binance Smart Chain? Are we going to be able to swap? Yeah, eventually. Like I said, the the technologies, mm-hmm. it's 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 really, it, it's 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 very close to Ethereum, but. Um, we need to ensure that we've done sufficient due diligence and mm-hmm. need to ensure that it's, it's tested correctly. I mean, yeah. you know, you're talking about taking chains from one thing to another chain, but you also, every time you do that, you open yourself up to any vulnerabilities on that other chain that might come across. So the testing has to be rigorous. And also, uh, you know, if you, if you look at all the team and everyone that's been working, they're, they're all extremely busy. So uh, yeah, will you say it? Yes. Uh, are we still testing and doing due diligence? Yes. Uh, will it, is it something that's going to go live in the next five minutes? Probably not. Uh, is there already a Binance Smart Chain wallet built into uh, Poltergeist right now? Yes. Um, so are we testing it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, another one here, any news? What about yield farms to incentivize liquidity? I forgot to mention that. That's another thing that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's good so much we have on. these questions. I mean, our our soldiers are there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, there's another question here about ga- gaming DAP development. But look, the you know all the ga- a lot of the gaming DAP development now has been um, has been handballed uh, quite rightly so to the guys working with Pavilion and so forth. You know, we we need to make sure that we're focused on the plumbing 
and uh, and everyone that's working on various apps gets the support that they need and that seems to yeah. be working quite well that's why now, i wanted um, to swing back on that one and just talk a little bit about that and you know just demonstrate <laughs> that phantasma is like we're we're, we're, we're the AWS of the internet in, in blockchain, and that's the way we see ourselves. And, um, you know, or building the pipes in a, in a country and, uh, or, or the roadways in a country to allow the cities to flourish and Pavilion and Ghost Market and Nominees and Clink are just these different cities that, you know, they, they build themselves, but we have got the foundation to, to run and facilitate all of that. And um, I'm not a programmer, so I look at things from a different perspective, but that's the way I see it. And uh so yeah i thought it'd swing back around but um yeah yield farms well I, look at catacomb there is a build out there that, that can be used uh there was also uh moon jar which um wasn't quite as popular as we thought it might be but uh that's where you know you can compete with each other to see you know have like a bidding war for tokens and start a bit of a comp though it wasn't particularly popular but that did go live uh catacomb there is a builder out there of that now, yield farms flows into liquidity. Another another problem is, you know, we've got Uniswap and all that, but we don't have a lot of um, we don't have a lot of liquidity in the pools. And the, you know, the feedback we've gotten is, well, one, it's expensive to swap to ETH. Fair enough. And the second one is, well, why would I do that when I could have it staked in on the Phantasma chain and be earning KCAL and uh, crowns? Actually, crowns was another thing that went live in the last six months, which was to incentivize staking even further. So people are getting all these staking rewards and so forth. They didn't want to pull their liquidity and stick it in the liquidity pool. So what we're going to do now, and this will go, this should go live next week, is have incentivized uh, liquidity pool involvement. So if you put your soul in the, you know, the Uniswap liquidity pool, uh, it uh, says ETH or BSC, it will, it'll be ETH first. If you put your soul in the liquidity pool, you'll you'll get the same KCAL rewards that you would normally get on the chain, but you'll also get the added benefit of trading fees. And ideally, as the liquidity go, as the pools go up, the, the volume goes up, liquidity goes up, and there's more fees. So that's um, that's the status of that. That should be live next week. Uh, uh, status crown, of chat. Crown utility. Are we uh, any consideration to add further utility to crowns? Yes, um, you know those days were introduced to increase the benefit. We always wanted to make the quality of life for people that have tokens out of circulation better. Crowns was a way to further improve that, and wherever we can, we're going to be using those more. Um, but it'll be more to increase your quality of life. Now, I mean, you already get significant benefits for having a crown. Uh, they're actually quite rare and they're hard to get. It takes three months worth of staking to get one. So we want to provide extra benefits. And what we can do in uh, what we have proposed is as we're working with various businesses out there and we're working directly with them, we, we are the, you know, the concept always comes up because all of these, all of these platforms have, have loyalty based programs. And when you have a loyalty-based program, and generally the conversation then shifts to, well, what's your loyalty-based program? As far as I'm concerned, our loyalty-based program is Soul Masters and Crowns. So if you have those, that's what I'm pitching is uh, if you want to engage our audience, they're, 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 the, they're the really committed uh, bunch. So I would say that anyone that has a crown or buys a crown, because people have been selling them on Ghost Market, that uh, you, you probably want to hang on to them because, yes, we will be increasing... Uh, we will be increasing or doing everything that we can to improve the quality of life for anyone that has one. Uh, like I said, Catacomb is a build out there. Nacho, I mean, yeah, it just, it's just, no one's, as we're, we are increasing our dev pool uh, because we have been incredibly swamped. So that's been sitting there in about a 95% done state for the best part of eight months now. So we will be assigning someone dedicated resource to, to go in and finish that off and get that back out, the 2.0. Uh, you know, I mean, people have asked about chain swaps about a thousand times. Yeah, but it's not something you run into. I mean, we get it, it works, we're testing it. You know, it's, you know, at, at the moment, we're the only chain that you can bi-directionally swap across, uh, you know, two chains, a lot of them 
say that they can, but they're not with a couple of clicks and it's not that simple. Uh, so with any plans to do more with um, oracles? Ah, I think I've, oracles are one of the most overblown things in crypto, right? I mean, an oracle is a piece of software that you ask a question to. It goes off to a, an external source, like an API. Um, and anyone that's used the internet would know that uh, uh, an API is how everything talks. You know, or they might hit a uh, they might hit a web service or something. Anyway, anyway, it's a piece of software that goes and asks another piece of software a question and gets an answer. So then the smart contract can tie into that answer. That's it. That's all an Oracle does. It is the most basic piece of software ever. Uh, I just don't understand why they get that much attention. I mean, we wrote, an, we wrote Oracles because we had to write Oracles because we needed information on markets. We needed information from... So with swapping, we needed information from the chain that we were swapping to. So when the smart contract tries to figure out, hey, can this swap be processed or not? It needs to ask that chain a question for our contract to be able to understand it. So we wrote an Oracle. The Oracle goes and asks that question. Uh, is there any plans to do any more with that? Um, look, if a requirement comes up where we have to do more with it, then, then we will. We did have an NFT validation Oracle at the moment, but uh, we were working with... Um, uh, a previous partner on that, but we sort of went some ways along the line and eventually figured out that we were doing 100% of the work and that we were just asking us for stuff. So we uh, decided not to continue with that because they were just wasting our time, basically, and they were removed from the website. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, the thing is going forward, we've really got to focus on bank for buck because, we, you know, we've made the mistake a few times of, engaging in things where we end up doing a whole bunch of work where we don't get paid um, and that doesn't happen in, that doesn't happen here anymore you know we, we do engaged scoped signed work for anything where we're doing work for other people where we're assisting our own ecosystem and our own community absolutely we have an obligation there and we'll always do it but in regards to doing stuff for other projects yep Right, um, now the rest of the questions seem to be for Garth, status of SEMCOR, already went through that, talking to David tomorrow. No, they're not going anywhere. They still have their tokens and that's that. Uh, Garth question, Garth question. Those are all addressed, guys, in, in the video with Garth. It, it runs about uh, 38 minutes, I think. Miss Tungsten. Important. We haven't heard anything about Phantasma developing. Who? What? Uh, Where? We Where? haven't heard anything Where? about... Why so, so slow? Just... <laughs> we haven't heard anything about the Phantasma development. Well, you've just heard it today, and you've heard all the different stuff. If you want to hear more, you can participate in, no, the, don't, don't, in the Telegram don't, group. In addition to that, uh, everything that's pinned, so you can go through the history of pins. Uh, everything that was discussed in today's call was pinned and discussed in in in, uh, in the Telegram group. So maybe well, they're not a part of that group. Um, they can go and check uh, it out okay. there. Oh, you know, just go to the website. Yeah. Uh, that's there's, everything there's that works. That. And in addition to that as well, um, Garth mentions it in his video, uh, but they have launched their blog and that's a communication channel for 22 racing series. And Pavilion has also launched a blog, which is the communication for, uh, for that. And there's actually some really cool content in there um, in regards to energy and some of the concerns that the market itself are having in regards to gaming and, and blockchain. So, Go and check that out. There's there's a ton of information there. Yeah, and look, I mean, we've already gone too long anyway. So, uh, look, my commitment to everybody is uh, we won't leave these for six months or whatever and have to do a, a really rushed 45 minutes um, committing that we do these at least once a month, Scott, uh, and then we can engage and then we can just have more rapid rolling updates. You know, it got to the point when we, you know, Garth was on before to answer all his stuff, so his video went for 45, so that's going to be a separate video now. So... Uh, all I can say is, look, it's been it's been a crazy six months. I'd like to think there's been a lot of success. Uh, there's also been a lot of learnings, and um, you know we've got a very secure future. Uh, we have signed paid work, so we're not going anywhere. I like that. You know, I, I'm not sure how many other projects that launched three years ago were still around, but. Uh, we're still here and we're still we're still kicking this so crypto space enough, but... is it's got that speculation and that fud and that frustration and whatnot and 
you know, at the end of the day, Phantasm is a software solution. And we are providing solutions to businesses that are existing today, whether it be the different bands that we're speaking with, whether it be the Hollywood or the restaurant aggregator or this other software solution. And there's just an abundance and there's other things that we can't even can't even talk about at this point in time. That's what it comes down to. Uh, but anyway, look, uh, I'd like to think that all the uh, all the paid work that we're doing for when that all starts going public and people can see that we're the uh, we're the software behind it, uh, I can't see that having a negative effect. And like mm -hmm. I said, we'll be still doing more in regards to that. And you really should tune in to the videos with Garth and then Vincent to see what you know all the stuff that they're doing because it's it's insane. So, oh well, look, I thank you everybody for you know for being here. I really appreciate you you know taking the time to watch sorry for making it so long look forward to doing smaller perfect shorter ones and uh if i've missed anything just come and ask me or one of the guys on on telegram and uh we'll be doing another one of these in a month let's just let's just book it in what do you reckon scott 26 <laughs> <laughs> i'm happy to do it in, in four weeks um but i i thought we had agreed every every three months and you know to kind of kind of treat it as if we were talking to uh, our token holders uh, uh, from a shareholder's perspective. But uh, every month is is good, and we can definitely do that because you know where I come from. I'm always crying for more content, and uh, I know. You know, want a videographer. You know, videography to come into Phantasma, and uh, yeah. So once a month is awesome, dude. And uh, let's let's get it booked in. We're making that commitment right now. Sure. Uh, yeah, we'll, look, we'll keep them short and sharp. And, uh, you know, I just say to everyone out there, look, it's been a, I think it's been a very challenging year for anyone, no matter which part of the world you've been in. It's uh, redefined a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that everyone, you know, just, um, just, in, you know, enjoy what's around, um, use what's there, because there's a lot of it. Uh, you know, be kind to each other and, uh, you know, don't be, don't be hard on yourselves. It's been a crazy year, you know, whether you got into crypto late or early, but, you know, just, Zoom out is is probably the the last message I'll leave everyone with. Zoom out a little bit. Um, See you later. Yep. Bye. See you, mate. Bye.